I'm Christine Goldby. I'm a group product manager here at Maxon working on the Red Giant product line. We are so excited to tell you about our two huge releases that happened yesterday, Magic Bullet Suite 14 and Trap Code Suite 16. I'm gonna focus on what's new with Trapco Particular for the next 10 minutes, and then Moritz Fortman will jump in to go over the new features in the Magic Bullet release. In case any of you are unfamiliar with Trapco Particular, it's a particle generator for After Effects. It's been around for quite a while now. We are constantly working on how to grow Particular to keep it at the top of its class, both in terms of usability and power um, for both production and motion graphics work. But as code gets dated, so does what it's capable of doing. So for its sweet 16th, we decided it was time for a full refactor. The Trapco team has overhauled the code, laying the foundation for so many possibilities ahead. So with this first release, we're really excited that we get to introduce some wonderful new features already. And since I don't have a lot of time to show them to you, I think we should jump right in and see the new coolness. Let's start with the new feature emit from parent system. In Trapco Particular 5, you can now emit particle systems off of any other particle from any other system above it, which now opens up all sorts of creative abilities that just weren't there before. To make this a little easier for you, we've also added in an extra eight systems, bringing us up to 16 systems that all work within the same 3D space with each other. So let's dive in and see how this works. If I go change my emitter type to an emit from parent system and make their direction a little tighter so that we can make, let's go for, we're gonna make some fireworks here. So I'm adding some color. I'm actually adding, what I've told it to do is have the emit from parent system match the color from the parent, bring the opacity and the size down a bit as their life goes on. And now we'll add another system Again, emitting from that primary system, but we're gonna tell it this time, instead of following along as a trail, we're gonna tell it to use this at parent end of life as a behavior here. So then, as each of these fireworks goes up and dies out, we'll see an explosion at the top. If we then treat that same explosion with the matching the color from the parent, if we also add on another emitter system, but this time have it follow that system three, add in some opacity over life, some size over life, then we can get these pretty cool fireworks effects without very much effort because it's, it's able to inherit some of those characteristics from above, like the color and the size and opacity of those particles. And speaking of particles, we've also added in a brand new category called particle physics. In fact, the whole physics engine of this particular five has been redone, all of it to try and give a better intuitiveness to how the controls work. So that you're not having to figure out how particular would set something up. You're gonna be thinking more in terms of how would this work in the real world. So let's start with particle physics. I've got a particle system here. For these particles, I'm gonna go ahead and crank the mass up a little higher, like to 100. And um, then we're gonna add in another system and just leave this one at its default size. So smaller particles, we'll leave it at a smaller mass. The default is 10. Uh, and then we're gonna go over and see what happens if we just go into our new environment category and add some wind. If you're a Trapco particular user, this is not the same wind that you're used to. This wind now takes into account the mass and air resistance of those particles. So in this instance, our lighter particles are being blown by the wind, but our heavier ones are not. They're not getting moved as much. You'll also notice we only have one environment block. We've, we've set that wind for this whole system because by taking out the environment block for system two underneath it, it's inheriting the properties from that primary system, which is part of what this designer does nicely for you is shows you where the properties are being inherited from other systems. These new particle physics parameters make a difference for any of the other environment physics such as gravity or air turbulence. If we crank up our air resistance on the larger particles, you'll notice that they don't fall as fast as the smaller ones that we've left the air resistance low on. They've got more surface area to hold them back up. So I've mentioned a few times in here that there's this whole great new physics engine. Physics in particular so far have always worked on this turbulence field, as we see right here. It would displace the particles, but those particles would always continue on the same path, which would be faster, but it wasn't always very realistic looking. So here's a side-by-side -side example 
the particles on the right here, I'm going to use our original turbulence field over here in the fast physics category to affect their position. And as you see, they're all moving along in those fractal fields, just as particular always has. If we go over to the setup on the left here, we're going to go into the air turbulence controls in our new environment category. And you'll notice when I change this air turbulence effect position, now that particle's path is changed for good once it starts to shift. And it ends up giving you a much more organic path for those particles. This new release isn't just about all the really big features, it's also a lot of little things that we've done throughout the whole of particular to try and make it more intuitive and easier to use. A great example of that is the new velocity over life control. Here we have a text emitter. Right now we're gonna have it sit on the text to begin with to make it easier to see that text and then drift off as it goes. Once they've drifted away from the text, we can do whatever we want to those particles. If we're trying to make this look like it's underwater, let's change those to bubbles. Uh, let's take us, let's change them away from being, let's take them away from spheres, we'll actually add a, a bubble sprite. Then once those bubbles are drifting off, we can either add some air turbulence to it to affect its position and make it look like water. We can take it into our fluid dynamics engine, which we've moved into the new physics simulation group. Fluid dynamics is the one thing that doesn't necessarily play well with everything else. That's what the little warning was that we just saw. But if it's the only simulation we're using, as it is in this case, it works just fine. So as we notice, it's going to drift off in our fluid forces, in our vector forces as we've set them up off the letters. The new physics simulation group is a really fun one. So not only do you have your fluids in there, it's also where we've moved bounce, which we now have the ability to have up to three bounce cards, each of which has its own full set of controls. Uh, bounce now works in tandem with air, which has been a huge request for a long time. So you can get your gravity, your wind, your air turbulence, all of the effects we've just seen will work at the same time with bounce. One of the new physical simulations that we have, we've got besides bounce, meander, fluids, we have this new one called flocking. You'll see that by default, they are moving around a fair amount because we've actually have the attract and separate both set pretty high to start with. With nothing happening, no velocity to these particles to start with, no flocking, they're just gonna sit in one place. If I tell them to have a stronger attraction towards each other, they're gonna start moving towards the center. Let's focus on this one down here, which is pretty cool. We've got this target position. Right now it defaults into the center. So let's go ahead and turn up this target attraction a bit and tell them that they're interested in seeing that target. Huh, that's cool, but how come only these ones on the edges are doing? Ah, that's right, because we have this range of view. So we can actually tell it, only look for that target if it's within this many pixels. So in this case, if I increase that, to a thousand, then they'll probably all see it. Yeah, they do. And they're gonna go head in and chase after it. That's pretty cool. What if instead we go down to this predator prey behavior and we say, actually, these blue ones are prey. Right now, they're not too worried. There's not a lot happening, mostly because there is no predator associated here. Let's go back up to our orange ones and say, hmm, actually, you're predators and you're really interested in those prey actually. Oh, look at that. So now, if they're within the range of view, our predators are gonna chase after the prey. As always, Harry Frank has provided us with a whole slew of amazing presets that really show off what all these new physics can do for you and how they can play together, such as using the predator and prey behavior on the text here in Text Slice always a great way of looking through and seeing how to use the new tools and get yourself started. There's so much that's been added to Trapco Particular 5 and I've only been able to just scratch the surface here. Uh, but one thing that's very important to know is we are extra proud to say that this is actually backwards compatible. You'll be able to load any of your setups from previous versions of Particular and have them work here after they migrate. So go and give it a try and get to enjoy creating with particles again. So now let's go over to Moritz and find out what this new release of Magic Bullet has in store for you.